Welcome back. If you've missed part one of our show or you'd like to watch our last episode, you can subscribe on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page, Revit Motor Show. Before we import our vehicle, is there an alternative in the local market? Let's leave that to Emmanuel to find out. Hi, my name is Captain Manu and today we're going to look at the disadvantages and the advantages of buying a car locally. So, let's start with the few disadvantages. Disadvantages Higher prices Local dealerships prey on people who fail to complete the research necessary to get the best value versus the price. If you do research on pricing, you can be prepared to negotiate a good deal at your local dealership. High pressure. If you simply walk into a competitive local dealership, you may be subjected to the car sales games, including pushy sales tactics and or sales agents who will try to get you to make a decision this time now now. Uncertain futures. Depending on the brands you are shopping for, your local dealerships may not be able to give you much needed services or information on your car. The unknown variable. The main disadvantage of purchasing used cars is that it has an unknown variable. Whether the dealer has worked on the vehicle to make it attractive for the test drive such that the buyers are still unaware of the repair bills or maybe economical issues with their car or maybe its reliability upon transportation. The buyers have no idea how the car was treated. Used cars usually have worn out consumables such as hoses, tires, shock absorbers, filters, fans and clutch. So you have to be very careful and strict while you are going to search for a good vehicle. Tough financing terms. It is difficult to negotiate fair financing terms on an older vehicle with financial institutions. And what about the many advantages that you get? Advantages. Convenience. Your local dealership is usually a short distance from where you are, so you can save your resources. Remember that this matter of convenience affects you, the buyer, and the seller. That means the car dealership is hoping that this convenience can sway you to buy the car, of course at a higher price. Supporting the local economy. Car dealerships are small businesses that help create job opportunities as well as help the country's economy. Personal connections. Nowadays, everyone knows someone who sells cars at a local car dealership. These connections can help you search for the best car possible at its best price. Easy to test drive. As a result of the dealership's close proximity to your home, you can complete test drives without having to travel far. Establish a service relationship. Purchasing a vehicle locally will make it easier to establish a relationship with a dealership that will later provide essential services such as insurance, mechanical repairs, and other car-related services. Lower depreciating rate. The original owner or the first car buyer received the depreciation hit. The market value of the new car decreases from year to year. So buying their car will save you a lot of money. Lower insurance fees. Unlike purchasing a new vehicle with high insurance fees, you will receive a lower cost of insurance if you choose to buy second-hand cars. So today I decided to test out whether I can be able to first of all buy and then drive the car at the very same day and it brought me here at Riru town which is actually not far from where I work. So I am here at the Vexi car dealers in Ruiru where I came to find out whether I can be able to buy 
and drive a car on the very same day. Now, this place is not actually far from where I work. It's really close and I am happy that I could be able to do this in one particular day. Now, I decided to assume that I had money and come and look for a car that is not only cheap but affordable to run. And I came across this gem, the Toyota Fielder. And I'm going to give you five reasons why this car should be on the top of your list of cars to buy locally and especially if you are a first time car buyer. The Toyota Corolla Fielder was introduced in August 2000 and has spanned to three generations till date. This is the first generation Toyota Corolla Fielder which shares the same chassis and spare parts as its brother Toyota Corolla, commonly known as the NZE locally. Apart from its dimensions differing by not so much, there is very little to tell the two apart except for the obvious design in the rear. The Fielder has a variety of engines. The 1500cc 110 horsepower front wheel drive, the 1500cc 105 horsepower four wheel drive, the 1800cc 136 horsepower front wheel drive, the 1800cc 125 horsepower four wheel drive and the one 1800cc 190 horsepower front wheel drive and if you didn't know the fielder also had a diesel engine which was a 2200cc engine which produced a very small 79 horsepower the fuel consumption for the engines are as follows for the 110 horsepower front wheel drive, the manual engine will return 18 kilometers to the liter, while the automatic variant of the same engine will produce 16.6 kilometers to the liter. The 105 horsepower four wheel drive engine, while on automatic transmission, will give you 14.4 kilometers to the liter. The 136 horsepower front wheel drive manual vehicle will give you 15.2 kilometers to the liter, while the automatic variant will give you 15 kilometers to the liter. The 125 horsepower four wheel drive, which only has the automatic transmission, will give you 13.4 kilometers to the liter, while the 190 horsepower front wheel drive engine will give you 13 kilometers to the liter with the manual transmission while the automatic transmission will give you 12 kilometers to the liter. For the basic fielders, the transmissions that could be combined with these engines were the 5-speed manual and the 4-speed automatic and you could get it with either the front-wheel drive or the 4-wheel drive. The fielder is considered to be very reliable. However, make sure you note the following. The engine uses a timing chain which will not require regular replacement. A lack of maintenance can contribute to timing chain wear, engine sludge buildup, and then blocked oil pathways. With a small number of the worst case scenarios worn out bearings or causing premature camshaft failure. This lack of maintenance can also block the oil pump. Ensure the oil light does not come on at all after the car is started or when it has warmed up. The rocker cover casket is the usual source of any leaks. Replacement will only cost a few thousand shillings, although if the leak is minor, it may not be worth doing. The plastic headlamps on the filter can get milky or opaque over time. The lamps can be polished back to life with commercial products or by professionals who offer the service for a small fee. Toyota recommends servicing the fielder every 12 months or 1500 kilometers, whichever comes first. The automatic transmission will also require a service every 60,000 kilometers or 9 years. Once inside our fielder, it seems very dark. 
thanks to those tinted windows and a spotty black and gray interior occasions with a few wooden panels here and there but we all know it's plastic everything feels quality and have stood the test of time the instruments are very clear large and easy to read with white text on a dark background however most of these vehicles will include a japanese radio that requires a band expander to receive local stations below the radio are the controls for the climate control air conditioning I found the front seat being too short with little support for the thighs of taller drivers. Rear seat room is more impressive. There is only enough space for two adults and a child, but legroom and headroom are very good for this size of a car. Boot space in the wagon is excellent. It's 402 liters matches some larger cars and its square boxy shape makes the most out of it. I believe four to six medium suitcases will fit. The rear seat splits and folds and lies almost flat to provide more space for larger items. So here are my five reasons as to why you need to buy this car, especially if it's your first time buying one. It is a very economical car and cheap to run. With a 1500cc engine, it has a 110 horsepower rating, which is enough to carry luggage and family at the same time comfortably. Also, you will be consuming 1 liter of fuel for every 18 kilometers traveled because it has an automatic transmission. It is cheap to buy. Now, the Vexi motor dealers are selling this car at 600,000, of course, Beya Kuangea. This is a good price for anyone looking for a workhorse that can still look stylish and be distinguished from a pro box. The spare parts are easily available all around the country since this vehicle, as well as its brother the NZE, were and still are sales hit in Kenya. And it goes without saying that there is no mechanic who can't fix this car. It has a good resale value. Toyotas are well known to hold their resale value well, and this filter is no different. It's a reliable car. Another synonym for Toyota is reliable. It's reported that some of these cars have already clocked more than 300,000 kilometers on the odometer and are still running like new. Well, so long as you maintain it well, it may even outlive you. So, that is my take on the Toyota Fielder. What do you think? Now, are you ready to own a vehicle? Share your views on our social media platforms. Thank you so much for watching our show. See you next week on Saturday at 3.30 p.m. where we will discuss about family cars. But before we end the show, let's take a look at a short video from the world of rally. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey,